Operation Downfall was the code name for the Allied plan for the invasion of Japan near the end of World War II. The operation had two parts, Operations Olympic and Coronet. Set to begin in October 1945, Operation Olympic was intended to capture the southern third of the southernmost main Japanese island, Kyushu, with the recently captured island of Okinawa to be used as a staging area. Later, in spring 1946, Operation Coronet was the planned invasion of the Kanta Plain, near Tokyo, on the Japanese island of Honshu. Air bases on Kyushu captured in Operation Olympic would allow land-based air support for Operation Coronet. If downfall had taken place, it would have been the largest amphibious operation in history. Japan's geography made this invasion plan quite obvious to the Japanese as well. They were able to predict the Allied invasion plans accurately and thus adjust their defensive plan. Operation Ket Shugo, accordingly, the Japanese planned an all-out defense of Kyushu, with little left in reserve for any subsequent defense operations. Casualty predictions varied widely, but were extremely high, depending on the degree to which Japanese civilians would have resisted the invasion. Estimates ran up into the millions for Allied casualties. Planning Responsibility for planning Operation Downfall fell to American Commander's Fleet Admiral Chester Nimitz, General of the Army Douglas MacArthur and the Joint Chiefs of Staff Fleet Admirals Ernest King and William D. Leahy, and Generals of the Army George Marshall and Hap Arnold. Douglas MacArthur at the time was also being considered for promotion to a special super rank of General of the Armies so as to be granted operational authority over other five-star officers. However, the proposal to promote MacArthur was only at the level of informal discussion by the time World War II ended. At the time, the development of the atomic bomb was a very closely guarded secret, known only to a few top officials outside the Manhattan Project and the initial planning for the invasion of Japan did not take its existence into consideration. Once the atomic bomb became available, General Marshall envisioned using it to support the invasion if sufficient numbers could be produced in time. Throughout the Pacific War, the Allies were unable to agree on a single commander-in-chief. Allied command was divided into regions. By 1945, for example, Chester Nimitz was the Allied Sea and Sea Pacific Ocean areas, while Douglas MacArthur was Supreme Allied Commander, Southwest Pacific Area, and Admiral Lewis Mountbatten was the Supreme Allied Commander, Southeast Asia Command. A unified command was deemed necessary for an invasion of Japan. Inter-service rivalry over who it should be was so serious that it threatened to derail planning. Ultimately, the Navy partially conceded, and MacArthur was to be given total command of all forces, if circumstances made it necessary. Considerations The primary considerations that the planners had to deal with were time and casualties, how they could force Japan surrenderers quickly as possible with as few Allied casualties as possible. Prior to the Quebec Conference, 1943, a joint British-American planning team produced a plan which did not call for an invasion of the Japanese home islands until 1947-48. The American Joint Chiefs of Staff believed that prolonging the war to such an extent was dangerous for national morale. Instead, at the Quebec Conference, the combined Chiefs of Staff agreed that Japan should be forced to surrender not more than one year after Germany's surrender. The United States Navy urged the use of a blockade of air power to bring about Japan's capitulation. They proposed operations to capture air bases in nearby Shanghai, China, and Korea, which would give the United States Army Air Forces a series of forward air bases from which to bombard Japan into submission. The Army, on the other hand, argued that such a strategy could prolong the war indefinitely and expend lives needlessly, and therefore that an invasion was necessary. They supported mounting a large-scale thrust directly against the Japanese homeland, with none of the side operations that the Navy had suggested. Ultimately, the Army's viewpoint prevailed. 
Physically, Japan made an imposing target, distant from other land masses and with very few beaches geographically suitable for seaborne invasion. Only Kyushu and the beaches of the Kanta Plain were realistic invasion zones. The Allies decided to launch a two-stage invasion. Operation Olympic would attack southern Kyushu. Air bases would be established which would give cover for Operation Coronet. The attack on Tokyo Bay. Assumptions While the geography of Japan was known, the U.S. military planners had to estimate the defending forces that they would face. Based on intelligence available early in 1945, their assumptions included the following that operations in this area will be opposed not only by the available organized military forces of the empire, but also by a fanatically hostile population, that approximately three hostile divisions will be disposed in southern Kyushu and an additional three in northern Kyushu at initiation of the Olympic operation. That total hostile forces committed against Kyushu operations will not exceed 8 to 10 divisions and that this level will be speedily attained. That approximately 21 hostile divisions, including depot divisions, will be on Honshu at initiation of coronet, and that 14 of these divisions may be employed in the Kanto Plain area. That the enemy may withdraw his land-based air forces to the Asiatic mainland for protection from our neutralizing attacks. That under such circumstances he can possibly amass from 2,000 to 2,500 planes in that area by exercise of rigid economy. And that this force can operate against Kyushu landings by staging through homeland fields. Olympic Operation Olympic, the invasion of Kyushu, was to begin on X Day, which was scheduled for 1 November 1945. The combined Allied naval armada would have been the largest ever assembled, including 42 aircraft carriers, 24 battleships, and 400 destroyers and destroyer escorts. 14 U.S. division equivalents were scheduled to take part in the initial landings. Using Okinawa as a staging base, the objective would have been to seize the southern portion of Kyushu. This area would then be used as a further staging point to attack Honshu in Operation Coronet. Olympic was also to include a deception plan, known as Operation Pastel. Pastel was designed to convince the Japanese that the Joint Chiefs had rejected the notion of a direct invasion and instead were going to attempt to encircle and bombard Japan. This would require capturing bases in Formosa, along the Chinese coast, and in the Yellow Sea area. Tactical air support was to be the responsibility of the 7th, 5th and 13th Air Forces. These were responsible for attacking Japanese airfields and transportation arteries on Kyushu and southern Honshu and for gaining and maintaining air superiority over the beaches. The task of strategic bombing fell on the United States Strategic Air Forces in the Pacific, a formation which comprised the 8th and 20th Air Forces, as well as the British Tiger Force. USASTAF and Tiger Force were to remain active through Operation Coronet. The 20th Air Force was to have continued its role as the main Allied strategic bomber force used against the Japanese home islands, operating from airfields in the Mariana Islands. Following the end of the war in Europe in May 1945, Plans were also made to transfer some of the heavy bomber groups of the veteran 8th Air Force to air bases on Okinawa to conduct strategic bombing, raising coordination with the 20th. The 8th was to upgrade their B-17 flying fortresses and B-24 liberators to B-29 superfortresses. Before the main invasion, the offshore islands of Tanegashima, Yakushima, and the Koshikijima Islands were to be taken, starting on X-5. The invasion of Okinawa had demonstrated the value of establishing secure anchorages close at hand, for ships not needed off the landing beaches and for ships damaged by air attack. Kyushu was to be invaded by the 6th United States Army at three points. Miyazaki, Ariaka, and Kushikino. If a clock were drawn on a map of Kyushu, these points would roughly correspond to 4, 5, and 7 o'clock, respectively. 
The 35 landing beaches were all named for automobiles. Austin, Buick, Cadillac, and so on through to Stutz, Winton, and Zephyr. With one corps assigned to each landing, the invasion planners assumed that the Americans would outnumber the Japanese by roughly 3 to 1. In early 1945, Miyazaki was virtually undefended, while Arioka with its nearby Good Harbor was heavily defended. The invasion was not intended to conquer the entire island, just the southernmost third of it, as indicated by the dashed line on the map labeled General Limit of Northern Advance. Southern Kyushu would offer a staging ground and a valuable air base for Operation Coronet. Coronet Operation Coronet, the invasion of Honshu at the Kanta Plains south of the capital, was to begin on Y Day, which was tentatively scheduled for 1 March 1946. Coronet would have been even larger than Olympic, with up to 40 divisions earmarked for both the initial landing and follow-up. In the initial stage, the 1st Army would have invaded at Kujakuri Beach, on the Bossa Peninsula, while 8th Army invaded at Hiratsuka, on Saugami Bay. Later, a follow-up force of up to 12 additional divisions of the 10th Army and British Commonwealth Corps would be landed as reinforcements. The Allied forces would then have driven north and inland, meeting at Tokyo. Redeployment Olympic was to be mounted with resources already present in the Pacific, including the British Pacific Fleet, a Commonwealth formation that included at least 18 aircraft carriers and four battleships. The Australian 1st Tactical Air Force took part in the campaign to retake the Philippines. These would likely have augmented U.S. close air support units over Japan. The only major redeployment for Olympic was Tiger Force, a Commonwealth long-range heavy bomber unit, made up of 10 squadrons scheduled to be transferred from RAF Bomber Command Control in Europe to air bases on Okinawa. This would have included 617 squadron, the specialist, dam busters who were armed with the massive ground penetrator, Grand Slam, bombs. In 1944, British plans had allowed for 500 minus 1,000 heavy bombers. This had been reduced to 22 squadrons of RAF, RCAF and other nations and by 1945 to 10 from the RAF, RCAF, RNZAF and RAF. If reinforcements had been needed for Olympic, they could have been provided from forces being assembled for Coronet which would have required the redeployment of substantial Allied forces from Europe, South Asia, Australasia, and elsewhere. These would have included the U.S. First Army and the Eighth Air Force, which were in Europe. The redeployment was complicated by the simultaneous partial demobilization of the U.S. Army, which drastically reduced the division's combat effectiveness by stripping them of their most experienced officers and men. According to U.S. historian John Ray Skates, American planners took no note, initially, of the possibility that non-U.S. Allied ground troops might participate in the invasion of the Kanto Plain. The published plans indicated that assault, follow-up, and reserve units would all come from U.S. forces. However, as the coronet plans were being refined during the northern summer of 1945, all the major Allied countries offered ground forces, and a debate developed at the highest levels of command over the size, mission, equipment, and support of these contingents. The Australian government requested the inclusion of Australian Army units in the first wave of Olympic, but this was rejected by U.S. commanders. Following negotiations among the Western Allied powers, it was decided that a Commonwealth Corps, initially made up of infantry divisions from the Australian, British and Canadian armies would be used in Coronet. Reinforcements would have been available from those countries, as well as other parts of the Commonwealth. MacArthur blocked proposals to include an Indian Army division because of differences in language, organization, composition, equipment, training and doctrine. He also recommended that the Corps be organized along the lines of a U.S. Corps, should use only U.S. equipment and logistics.
and should train in the U.S. for six months before deployment. These suggestions were accepted. A British officer, Lieutenant General Sir Charles Keatley, had been nominated to lead the Commonwealth Corps. The Australian government questioned the appointment of an officer with no experience fighting the Japanese and suggested that Lieutenant General Leslie Moore's head, an Australian who had been carrying out the New Guinea and Borneo campaigns, should be appointed. The war ended before the details of the Corps were finalised.